here with Mark Reinhardt of the Green Party. Mark, thank you for coming down. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Um, the first question I want to ask is, is uh, a lot of people sort of feel that the, the Green Party's focus is too narrow to effectively govern. What, what, what do you say to that? That is an old vision. Things where we, the Green Pass, the Green Party encompasses a wide variety of issues. Of course, we always have the environment high in our in our policies, but we look at social issues such as what plays very well and very much here in the in the writing in, in Vernon is and, and Samana, the opioid crisis, which has cost or close to 100 people their lives in this uh, in this writing since 2016. We have the homeless, homelessness issue. We have a mental health issue, um, and then on top of that, the First Nations need attention. We have water issues that, uh, or issues that they don't have potable water around the country. Uh, we have to appreciate the people in the north because we have to keep people in the north. Uh, and of course, then you go to the to the the environmental issues. But if I can just summarize it in in one phrase. I can say that green policies are built for young people, for old, for men, women, children uh, of all color and creed, uh, for the sick, for the healthy. So we keep people in mind, and you find that back in that we we frown on on corporations trying to get into get their hands into politics by donations. We steadfastly have refused that all along so mm -hmm. that we are for the people and we're funded by the people. That's why you don't see Green Party candidates handing out freebies because people fund us to promote ourselves and we don't don't promote ourselves by giving away freebies and then uh, see the people in small business behind mm -hmm. us being cut out because we give away freebies, freebies they cannot sell. Mm -hmm. uh, another big ongoing issue is the pipeline. I think Kevin's pretty clear on what the Green Policies on that? That is uh, very clear. I think two issues I would like to touch on that. First of all, we, we, we look at oil as a resource and as a raw material. We export it and then they produce um, wind turbines, solar panels, tidal generators with it. We want to produce that in Canada. Let's use our resources and create jobs by producing stuff ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, translate into the BC problem with the, with the raw logs. Uh, we export raw logs, which is I've been in trade for years. I've worked in the Middle East and in Europe, and I uh, have a good picture as to how you can use the trade to make uh, to to support your your economy and support your jobs. Create the jobs here to produce an added value, like finish the logs off, export them, then uh, finish whatever you're making, export it. Don't export the raw materials. Mm. The other side of the pipeline is that you cannot be, as, as Elizabeth May said so very clearly, you cannot be a climate leader if you build pipelines. If we look at other parties' policies where conservatives want to reduce taxes and, and, and uh, work towards the environment by building pipelines, that's nonsense. The thing is that uh, people, uh, it tries to attract people by this fa fabulous reducing taxes. If we reduce taxes, we reduce services. Look at Ontario, what's happened mm -hmm. there. Look at Alberta, what's happening now. And uh, that's not where we want to go. We want to support the people, support every layer of the population, and uh, provide, make sure that our, our children get the proper education they need, that they don't go broke if they go to university. And or have debt for for God knows how long. <laughs> Mark, uh, Mark with the Green Party, thank you for stopping by. Thank and you ever so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, remember, get out and vote October twenty first. Thank you.